This is the Whitestone Dome Glass, the most unique feature of this product. You get to add the glue to your screen protector yourself, which leads to the question, why? Having to add the glue myself for a screen protector is a first for me, and I've used a buttload of screen protectors in the last few years. At the end of the day, this is one of the coolest screen protectors I've ever used, and it's going to be one of the best if you're patient with it. The Whitestone Dome Glass is actually quite expensive, and it's comparable in terms of cost to the Belkin Invisiglass Ultra you'd get from the Apple Store, but this product, is way 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 better. In the next few minutes I'm going to talk about the design of the dome glass, the incredibly involved installation process, I'm going to talk about crack filling, the protection it offers your iPhone, tell you which cases will work with the screen protector, and by the end of this video you're going to see why the dome glass has changed my mind when it comes to screen protectors for the iPhone 10. Real usage, real reviews, mobile reviews a dot ca. Hey Monty, what was I supposed to say about scratch protection? Do you remember? What do we do to it? What were the awful things that we did to it? Was there rocks, knives, keys, coins? Right, there was a chair. Now there is one question I want you guys to think about throughout this entire review. This is a premium product and it commands a premium price. So after you finish watching this review, tell me in the comment section below if you would be willing to spend around 50 bucks on it. When it comes to design, the fit of the dome glass is impeccable. The marketing fluff is a little deceiving as it looks like it will sit flush with the curve of the iPhone, but it doesn't. I wouldn't call this product an edge to edge screen protector as a small part of the iPhone screen is still exposed, but this is a good thing when it comes to fitting with other cases. From my perspective, the Whitestone has found the perfect fit for a screen protector. It's kind of analogous to making the perfect peanut butter sandwich, which I'll elaborate in a minute. This is the only non-edge to edge product that actually extends past the touchable area of the screen, but not far enough that the iPhone gets caught on your iPhone cases. The edges of the product are rounded, which is a must for devices like the iPhone 10 because of all the gesturing that you have to do. Plastic screen protectors like the ones from Rhino Shield and Mouse tend to have sharp edges that are very noticeable when you gesture on the iPhone 10. Part of the reason why this product is more expensive is the fact that it uses chemically treated glass. The average screen protector uses tempered glass, which already is pretty strong. Whitestone uses tempered glass that's soaked in chemicals, uh, which makes this glass even stronger. This puts the product on the same level as, well, Gorilla Glass. But remember, it's glass. It's still going to break if you're not nice to it. The screen protector is 0.33 millimeters thick, which is a number that every screen protector company seems to market, uh, despite the fact that Apple doesn't want screen overlays to exceed 0.3 millimeters according to their accessory guide. On the topic of the guide, the dome glass is compliant when it comes to the cutout at the top of the screen, so face ID is not going to be an issue. The dome glass didn't discolor or reduce the clarity of my iPhone 10, but that's really not a unique feature since I've never noticed that problem with glass screen protectors. One of the downsides that I noticed during my test period is that dust accumulates between the device and iPhone. This is one of the two downsides of this product. It's not really noticeable during normal usage, but if you spend the time to get your face up close to your iPhone and look at it, you're definitely going to see the grouty grouty dust. As I said earlier, you have to add the glue yourself, but Whitestone does include all the tools you need to do it right, which is kind of not like liquid screen protectors where you just kind of get this tiny wipe and you just kind of haphazardly wipe everything onto your iPhone. The installation may seem overwhelming at first, but it's not that bad once you read the instructions a few times and watch the installation video. The number one thing I learned from doing the install of this product is do it in a well-ventilated area. So it's been a few hours since I've put this adhesive on the iPhone 8 Plus, and it works fine, but man, does this thing stink. It's nox noxious, kind of making my head hurt. I applied the iPhone 10 screen protector in this video uh, at night and left alone, so I didn't really smell the fumes. But with my crack filling test, I did it during the day and basically stewed in the fumes all day. And by the end of that day, my head was just not in the right place. It was kind of grody. Installing a dome glass is pretty cool. First, you load the iPhone into this cradle. Then you set up the bridge and you literally pour glue onto your iPhone. Whitestone includes two vials of adhesive in case you screw up the first one. Once you pour the adhesive on the device, you roll the adhesive down to the center of the device. That's right, you basically seesaw a pool of liquid into the middle of your iPhone. After that happens, you place the glass in the cradle and you pull the tab and watch the liquid adhesive spread across the entire screen. Then you shoot UV lasers at it to harden the adhesive. That's the Coles Note version of the installation process. So damn cool. And by UV lasers, I mean a UV light. This thing, it's really not lasers, but lasers just sound way cooler. 
I guess technically light is kind of a laser, isn't it? Now throughout my entire installation process, I observed a few things. My installation area wasn't level, so I needed to manually move the adhesive to the center, actual center of the device. Also, I think they gave me way too much adhesive as it leaked out the bottom of the cradle and I ended up with an tomed iPhone in clear plastic for a few minutes. I was going to take a Dremel to it, but I was able to pull it apart. The UV light included in the packaging is actually meant for nails, but I don't think that really matters. Does anybody else see the resemblance of an old school magic mouse with the UV light. Now I say the installation process is a downside because it's very involved and it takes time and patience to do it right. Now it all may seem very very gimmicky but I do think there is a reason for it. The iPhone screen actually starts curving before the screen actually ends which is why the average screen protector doesn't extend past that point. Other screen protectors reach that point and extend their coverage with just glass. There isn't any actual adhesive on the back of it. The dome glass doesn't extend as far as your traditional edge to edge screen protectors, but far enough to cover the whole screen with glass and adhesive. The liquid adhesive basically fills in the ununiform gap, which I think is pretty cool. Remember at the beginning of the video I said that the dome glass was like a perfect peanut butter sandwich? Normal screen protectors would look like this. It's not a full sandwich. Edge to edge screen protectors would be like this, peanut butter covering most of the bread, but you're still going to have to suffer through partial bites of just bread. The dome glass is a peanut butter sandwich with the edges cut off, with peanut butter reaching the edge. Every bite is a perfect mixture of pillowy soft bread and peanut butter. If you're finding this video helpful, considering getting your stuff through my Amazon links doesn't cost you anymore and you'll be you know, helping me out um, in terms of filming future videos. Now Whitestone claims that their product fills in minor cracks. Now I didn't have an iPhone with minor cracks. The only one I had had massive cracks, which was my iPhone 8 Plus. So I still decided to put Whitestone's claim to test. Honestly, if it works on this gigantic crack, it's gonna work on smaller cracks. Now to test Whitestone's claim, I found a spare screen protector tried to strip the existing adhesive off the back with acetone but failed. Some of it did come off, uh, but not all of it. I installed the screen protector to see if the leftover adhesive had any effect on the crack. It did not. I dumped the second vial of the adhesive onto the screen and plopped the screen protector on top and shot it with the UV lasers. This is what my iPhone 8 Plus looked like 10 hours after installation. The crack looks like it's gone, but it's still visible if you look hard enough. So if you're looking for a way to hide really nasty cracks in your smartphone screen, definitely get the screen protector. It, that in my opinion, is worth the $50. As a side note, I did take the screen protector off and the top and bottom parts of the screen protector, it didn't get through the black, but the stuff that did harden was a pain in the butt to remove. Now, when it comes to protection, Whitestone claims that it is greater than or equal to 9H hardness. It's not very often that I see greater than or equal. It's usually just 9H hardness. Now, before I went and did the scratch test, I decided to drop it a couple of times on a corner of a chair, just, you know, because I can. As I was setting up for the drops, there was a hailstorm, so I decided to see if time any balls of ice would harm the screen. To my dismay, the screen broke. Just kidding, it did not. Now, screen protector versus chair corner, yeah, it was fine. To be complete, I guess, with my screen drops, I decided to do a small drop on the river rock and the screen protector actually broke. And this is really surprising to me, but I had to remind myself that regardless of what type of glass it is, it is still glass and glass breaks. The break in the screen protector also happened with the uh, Invisiglass Ultra as well. So glass does break, even though it does cost 50 bucks. When it comes to scratch resistance, I took my favorite rock, uh, which did nothing, nor did the Looney, which is a ridiculous name for a coin, or keys or knives. The, the only thing that would leave a mark is the file on my Leatherman, which is an expected result. That thing just scratches everything. Now, removing the broken screen protector was quite painful. Remember the perfect peanut butter sandwich analogy? The adhesive reaches the edge of the glass, so it's hard to get your fingernail under it. Some of the Amazon reviews claim that it comes off easily, but I really have a hard time believing that. I had to use a knife to get under the corner and because of the angle the screen protector cracked like nobody's business tiny glass shards everywhere it was so annoying kind of wish i followed my own advice by taping the screen before removing it using my iphone 10 with a whitestone dome glass is awesome i can definitely tell that this is a product of better quality it's smoother than most and the fit is like i said before uh, phenomenal. If you own a fitted suit, take note of how you feel when you wear that fitted suit. And that's kind of how I feel about the fit of the screen protector. Now, my biggest complaints with normal screen protectors on the iPhone 10 is that the edge of the screen protector is incredibly noticeable when you swipe the edges. It's even worse with plastic screen protectors as you can't bevel those edges. So you'll notice a sharp edge every time you use your device. You don't have this issue with the uh, white stone. Tech accessories are supposed to make your devices easier to use. And the dome glass definitely falls into that category. When it comes to 
to working with other cases, I've been able to use the screen protector with a Catalyst Impact Protection, a Cotabay Veil XT, a Luda case, a Mouse Limitless version 2, a Loopy case, as well as a Rhino Shield Solid Suit. In fact, there isn't any normal case in my collection that I couldn't use with the dome glass. The fit of the product is that tight. In short, the dome glass is just a better product. It's a nice product. I've been looking for a good iPhone 10 screen protector for the last year and haven't found it. So prior to this review, my general thought for the iPhone 10 was just go buy cheap screen protectors. From my perspective, I consider screen protectors as a consumable. It's going to scratch. It's going to break uh, because it's glass. So, you know, if it scratches and breaks and you spend, you know, $10 on a pack of three, it, you don't feel bad. From a general use perspective, I really had a hard time seeing the difference between a $3 screen protector and a $30 one. For example, all the cheap cases I bought from AliExpress, some of them actually came with screen protectors and they have the same fit as the Tech 21 screen protector you get from the Apple store for 30 bucks. Maybe the quality of glass is slightly lower, but unless I am doing like microscopic comparisons, I won't know that. Now my rationale has changed a bit after using the dome glass. If you're like me, who's generally very careful with their devices outside of doing product reviews and have the disposable income for it, remember, you gotta have the money for it. Get this product. The fit and feel of this product is just awesome, as long as you have the patience to install it properly. In many ways, it's analogous to using facial tissues. I know I'm using a lot of analogies in this review, but it's analogous to facial tissue to blowing your nose and having a nice silk hanky. Both accomplish the same thing, just one gets tossed in the garbage after you use it a few times, and the other one, well, projects a sense of sophistication and uniqueness. So after all that, if you've reached this point in the video, I do commend you, because this is a long review. Would you spend the $50 on the white stone dome glass? Is a higher quality and better adhesive or glue worth the high price? Let me know in the comments section below. If this is the first time you're watching my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. Um, produce content at least once a week. Yeah, once a week. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. You guys notice the uh, leopard skin, cheetah skin uh, bow tie? Monty and I are wearing uh, matching under.